the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate this Eucharist, we again call to mind our sins, acknowledging them, asking that the Lord would show his mercy so we can celebrate this Mass worthily. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal, mor mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, and every winged thing in the shades of it bows. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be God. Thanks to the Lord, to 
the just will flourish like the palm tree and grow A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wills the sickle sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is shown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. In our readings today, we have an oracle, two proverbs, and a piece of advice. In our first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, he's speaking to a people who find themselves in exile in Babylon. They're have almost lost all hope, and they have come to believe that God has abandoned them and the covenant that he had with them. And so Ezekiel speaks this oracle, this kind of trimming of trees and planting of trees and so forth and so on. But what he was really trying to say is that God is in control of their destiny and that he will once again restore the kingship of David and the people will be able to return and to have the fullness of God's blessing. In the parables, we see the parable of the secret seed. The farmer throws the seed around, it starts to 
grow slowly, almost invisibly at first, but then signs start to appear. A blade comes up, the ear comes up, uh, suddenly the ear is producing a crop and the harvest is ready to be harvested. And so the farmer goes out, uses the sickle and brings in the harvest. And then we have the parable of the mustard seed, which is a real metaphor for hope. That the smallest of things that seem so insignificant can produce such a large plant that birds come and rest in its branches and shade in its shadows. What Jesus is trying to say to us is that the kingdom of God is all around us. It's producing many things, but so often we don't notice them until all of a sudden there's signs and fruits and there's different ways in which again, God shows that his blessings is upon us. And as those blessings increase in our lives, we grow closer to him. And then God is ready to harvest us to be able to be with him forever in paradise. And then we have the mustard seed, which again, apparently isn't going to be very much significance. But he says, what can we compare the kingdom of God to a mustard seed? Small, but it can be very effective as it grows and becomes this huge plant. And this is what the kingdom of God is about, is that it is growing amongst us, it's spreading out, it's becoming something that embraces all of us so that we will be able to live with our God forever and ever. And so St. Paul, writing to the Corinthians, say, you are the believers of Christ, and because of your belief in Christ, no matter what you suffer, use that suffering as a way of uniting yourself to Christ, and even welcome death, because it'll be through death that you're going to be able to be with God forever and ever. And so he says, we walk by faith and not by sight. We believe that God is there present amongst us, that God's guiding us, that God is again helping us to deepen that relationship that he offers to us. And so Paul says, hold on to that faith. Walk by that faith and let the words and the deeds, the example of Christ, be your example so that you too will be able to be with our Heavenly Father forever and ever. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God has called us to be his people, and he continually watches over and guides us. Confident in his love, let us present our prayers and intentions. For our Holy Father, that his prayers for Christian unity and renewal be quickly fulfilled, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our President, Governor, Mayor, and members of Congress, that the Holy Spirit inspire and strengthen them in their service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students and teachers finishing the school year, that prayer, Eucharist, and charity remain on their schedule throughout the summer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by any kind of need, that the Lord graciously grant them relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this body of believers of the Diocese of Yakima, that we always aspire to please God and do his will. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, in faith we have presented our prayers to you, and now ask that you would grant them through your Son, Jesus, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise of His name for our good and good of all His holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. One thing have I asked of the Lord, this will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.